Welcome. I'm Amanda, and welcome to Battleground Games and Hobbies in Abington, Massachusetts. Battleground is a game and hobby store, like the name suggests, uh, in the greater Boston area. With three locations. We're in the Abington store because Abington is closest to where I live and is also um, equipped with a nice loft and a streaming rig. So that's why we're here. Uh, we also have a store in Norton and then north of Boston in Saugus. So if you're close to either of those, go give those a check. Those, they have very nice communities in those stores. If you're near Abington, come join us. Um, today we're having a Pokemon tournament. There's a Pokemon pre-release event going on for whatever the newest Pokemon set is. I don't play Pokemon, sorry. Um, so I am painting some Fallout figures. Right now I'm working on the board game, the original, like the first board game, um, the Fantasy Flight original edition. There is a second game coming out sometime in quarter four. So sometime in the next couple of months, I guess. Fantasy Flight is putting out um, Fallout New California, which is where the first game was very much um, the East Coast version. It had like Fallout 4 uh, locations and one of the Fallout 4 DLCs and it had uh, the Fallout 3 um, Capital Wastes and one of the Fallout 3 DLCs as locations and scenarios and characters. Um, New California is going to have the like earlier games and New Vegas, which I'm really excited about. I think that's really cool. Oh, so we don't have the chat up, Andy, on your laptop. Just so you know, um, we, you have the music up, so I can see the playlist just fine. I can tell if it's going to play me, you know, every uh, Game of Thrones song ever. But uh, I can't see the, tr the chat there, so hold on, let me get the chat up on my computer and mute. Yeah, I can't see the chat. Cause it's yeah, because it's got a, it's got iTunes in front of it. Um, so what I'm doing right now, I've already painted a set of these figures. These are the play figures for. Um, thank you. Um, uh, these are the figures for the base game. So we have the. Uh, Brotherhood Outcast, specifically, that's specifically mentioned as an outcast in the game. It's not just power armor and a Gatling laser, it is specifically a Brotherhood Outcast, and that's why the armor is sort of that blackish steel along with red highlights to it. It's because that's what the outcasts paint their armor like. A Super Mutant. A Wasteland settler. She is specifically wearing um, this floral skirt and denim vest combo, very stylish, that um, Ellie, who is Nick's uh, secretary, and I forget which one, is it Roxy? It's either Roxy or Rowdy over in the Adam Katz garage wears. Um, so that is a legitimate outfit in the game that you can get and wear which I think is really cool. The Super Mutant, likewise, is wearing the Super Mutant Shoulder Rags, which is equipment, like a named outfit for Super Mutants. Um, and is carrying a Super Sledge. We're gonna be painting that today. The Brotherhood Outcast, we're gonna paint this Gatling laser today. We already painted uh, her triple barreled shotgun, which I remember getting quite annoyed about when I originally painted my figures. Um, these are the figures that are getting raffled off for Extra Life, which is coming up, and I will get to that in just a moment. Um, but I remember when I painted my copies of these being very annoyed that the triple barrel shotgun is not, like, canonical. <laughs> We've got a very dapper ghoul. 
this pinstripe vest. I couldn't find like an actual outfit that this was definitely based off of with like the watch chain and everything. But this is as close um, as I could get. Um, what's her name? Who Daisy, who runs uh, one of the shops in Good Neighbor. Love Good Neighbor. Uh, Daisy is wearing sort of a blue blazer or cardigan over a white shirt with a red tie. I thought, yeah, you know, this is a vest, not the cardigan. It's definitely a vest. There's sculpted lines in there. Um, so we're going to make him, like, he's going to be a dapper ghoul who's one of the uh, triggermen. <laughs> That's what he is. And we've got our vault dweller. We've got our, our soul survivor. Um, who I, for this one, I made it vault 111. Um, and he's carrying Old Painless, which is a named unique gun in the games. Um, and I believe can be found... I feel like it's from three original. Like, I think maybe it's from one of the earlier games originally. I'd have to look it up, but I know um, I remember encountering it. Anyway, the thing is, these versions that I'm painting right now, I've already painted these, and so there are videos existing of me painting these figures before because I painted my own copies. Um, and the reason why I'm painting them a second time is because the Extra Life Charity Marathon is coming up. It is coming up in two weeks. Two weeks from now, we will be awake for 25 hours. I mean, we won't be. I'm, I'm going to admit right now, I will crash at some point, probably around 5 a.m., when the stu sun starts peeking up over the horizon, my brain suddenly goes from, this is fine, to... You made a mistake. So I will probably crash around dawn. Um, <clears throat> but the reason I'm painting multiple versions of this is because I painted my own to play with my copy of the game, which I'm really proud of. And now I'm painting a copy to go in a copy of the game that will be up for raffle during the Extra Life event. Um, we're going to be doing a um, 25-hour gaming marathon. We are going to be streaming a great deal of it, uh, as much of it as we possibly can. The one thing that ends up being a little bit iffy in terms of streaming is the werewolf game. So at 1-ish, 1 a.m.-ish, 1 we usually play an absolutely massive game of werewolf. And when I say massive, I'm talking we had... 38 people, close to 40 people the last time we played, which is a little chaotic. It's also really hard to mic. It's re audio is really difficult. I think this year if we put Derek on, Derek's usually the moderator running the game, if we put him on a wireless mic, because now we have the wireless mics, if we put him on a wireless mic and then just work with like the directional mics, the, the shotgun mics, for the crowd, that could work. So we've got some ideas. We're not just playing Werewolf, though. We're not just playing Ultimate Werewolf, which is what we've played in the past. We're going to be playing Ultimate Werewolf Legacy, where conditions from the first session affect your next session directly. You can earn um, like titles and abilities, and something that you did in the first session. You killed that werewolf pup, and you thought it only mattered in that session of the game, well, like, you know, 10 years later, it might come back to bite you. Uh, literally, uh, a wolf might come bite you. So, Werewolf Legacy, I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays. I don't normally play in the game because I find it so much fun to watch. It's just a really great spectator sport. Um, so, that's what's coming up. Uh, this coming Friday night at 7.30, we normally do play some sort of board game. We did not make any decisions last night <laughs> what we were going to play. We played last night, we played um, one of the Unlock games, which is a card deck based escape game. And it was actually really good. It was really fun. Good puzzles, nice mechanic, easy to pick up in terms of like how the mechanic works, though we did skip at one point. 
you're supposed to take like the red puzzle piece cards and figure out which blue puzzle piece par cards to combine them with and then add the values of the cards. The cards have a value, a unique value on them. If you add them together and there's a card of that value that's still in the deck, you get to check that. Um, if you're right that those two items work together, then that card will be the next part of the puzzle. If you're wrong, you lose time off the timer. You have to hit the penalty button. So we, we did lose a couple of things. But there was at one point I was like, this card here clearly tells me what the code on this box over here is. And I, I skipped the add them together and make sure that they actually do go together stage and was like, oh, it's obviously this. And I had Andy put in the code for that card, even though I hadn't officially looked closely enough at the card, like according to the game, how would I know that it has a little punch code? Because you can see the little punch code thing, like the little device on the box. Anyway, we skipped over that because we were like, what does it mean we have to discard card 48? We don't have card 48. It's because card 48 would have been the one that I would have gotten by combining the two items. Anyway, it worked. It was the right move, so whatever. Anyway, um, Um, so yeah, I've already painted mine. So that was the super mutant. Here's uh, my Brotherhood Outcast with his finished Gatling laser. And here's the uh, one that I'm doing for the raffle. So you can see the Gatling laser. I went a little heavier with the red on this one. I decided to go a little lighter on this one. Um, so I just need to do finish doing the weapon, decide if I want to play around with the paint jobs on the armor at all. I need to do the fusion core on the back. So yeah, got to play with that a little bit. Um, got my dapper ghoul. This is mine. Which I can, I can tell which ones are mine. One, because they're finished, but also because they're sealed. And so they've got a sheen to them. Even though I use a matte uh, varnish, there's still a little bit of a sheen to them. So, so there's my ghoul and the ghoul that I'm working on. So I need to play with the skin tone. I need to do some highlighting. Um, get in there with the eyes, make them look real dead. And then I need to finish the laser, uh, the plasma gun. Plasma guns need those little green bits. I need to do the wires. Um, but otherwise his, his pants are, like the pinstripes on his vest came out real well this time. They're very subtle on mine, they're a little more pronounced on this one because I, I got better with the brush, which is really cool. It's nice to like be able to see progress in your own stuff. Uh, this is my vault dweller. His nose has gotten a little rubbed. <laughs> it's got a shiny nose. Um, I'm actually a lot happier with this one. This one came out a lot better in my mind. Um, I feel like the the gold sort of striping on his uniform. I must have used a lighter yellow on this one. And I was a, maybe a little heavy handed with the wash up here. So it's a lot darker. Um, but otherwise their, their guns are very similar. Their skin tones are very similar. Um, I didn't make this on him. I made that a, an actual patch. But otherwise, they're very similar. They're meant to be. I mean, that was kind of the point. Um, he's Vault 13, Vault 111. And finally, got these two. And these ones are both done. This one's mine. Um, so the one, that's the one I'll be taking home again. This one is the one that's going in the kit to um, go out for extra life. I decided to make these uh, duct tape on her boots this time. But the skirt is very similar. The vests are very similar. It's a little more subtle 
and it's weathering. So yeah, um, I decided to give her lighter gloves because I gave her a darker skin tone. So yeah, you know, you make different decisions based on how you're feeling various times. I'm happy with the striping that came out on both of their uh, scarves in the back. So yeah. The detail on her skirt is a little less distinct, or is it's a little more so, but I may weather that a little bit more. So yeah, she's almost completely done. There's a couple of little details that I want to do on her, um, but otherwise she's done. The vault dweller is largely done. There's some detail work I want to do on his pit boy um, and a couple little bits and pieces around um, his uniform. Um, What's left on him is to do highlighting on his skin and the gun. What's left on him is some work on the wire here and the weapon. And what's left here is if I want to do any more detail work on the armor and the weapon. So that's what we're doing today. It's all fine detail work and little bitty things on the weapons. Let me respond to this and then we'll get out my paint. I want to do I want to I want to finish this guy. I want to get him done and I want to get her done. So let's just do what we can to get these ones finished. So yeah, as you can see, I did the pip boy for him. I actually painted a little screen. Got a little black screen in there with little green highlights. So yeah. Pit boys are these, um, have this like in, like really industrial metallic, it looks like army surplus sort of. They're very industrial looking, uh, like semi-metallic brown. Uh, it's like this plasticky, yeah, it's this ugly, ugly, ugly color. And I mixed it, I, I nailed it in mine. I really feel like I got the color just spot on. This one, I didn't nail it quite as hard, but at the same time, I'm gonna be putting a wash on it. So that's gonna darken it a fair amount. So let's pull up a picture of a pit boy Just to get some uh, visual reference. Yeah, God, it's ugly. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I own one. I have the special edition that um, Fallout, the like Fallout 4 special edition came with a functional, like it, you can put it on and it has like functional buckles and stuff. And you can put your phone in the screen and have your phone act as your Pip-Boy screen. So I have that. I own that. Because why not? at the time I had saved up and I could it. That is an ugly shade of brown. <coughs> Excuse me. I have had a cold, so I am a little phlegmy. So I do want to do a few little black um, details on this because like there are knobs and stuff that are little black dials and things. weird it's kind of reversed his knobs and dials are on the wrong side anyway don't care not my problem that's the sculpt so 
So yeah, they're doing a whole Pokemon thing downstairs. So that's cool. Um, I assume you got enough people, Andy. I assume you had... It seemed like you had enough people to... fire off the event, like, officially and everything. Which is cool. That makes me happy for you. Sandy. And I have to go over that again with the green later because the green is really, hey cat, um, the green is really thin. Um, just as a paint, it's not super opaque. So I'm gonna have to go back over that.
yeah, it's really tiny. Like, that's what I mean by what's left is a lot of detail work and then, like, the weapons. So, put them aside for a second because there's something else I want to do with the black. to do some highlighting on him. Thank you. Um, it's a lot of practice and definitely steady hands. up in just a moment. Hey, Pi. Cool, good to see you. How was the festival? aside for a moment. Like I said, I'm going to have to go over this a couple of times. The green is 100% the right shade. But definitely, it's hard to get it bright enough. get a little bit of silver because there are some like silvery wires and stuff on the uh, 
on the pit boy. For this wash, I definitely want to make sure that um, I'm very careful with it. I don't want to slap it on too heavy because I don't want to obscure any of the detail that I've painted in. better. Alright, I think he is mostly done. Um, his boots aren't terribly interesting, but let's face it, how frequently do you look at your character's shoes in Fallout? Almost never. So, I want to go over the green in his plasma gun. So one of the things I did the last time I painted um, was I put a coat of shadowed steel on his gun and then I put a coat of null oil onto it. And that's so that the wash is already done. So that now when I go in with detail work, I'm not gonna have to worry too much about obscuring it with the wash to get the wash into all these crevices. She's pretty much done. What else did I want to, oh, I wanted to put a wash on her. For her wash, we're actually, we're gonna go, um, we're not putting a wash on her specifically. We're putting a wash on her gun. actually going to sit her upside down so that that wash will sit where it needs to because that was really the last thing left on her maybe some detail work on her skirt after I'm done with some of the other guys um, we're going to do some highlighting on his skin because feral ghouls actually have a lot of texture going on thank you I'm really happy with the pinstripes I'm really happy with how they came out 
Like I was saying earlier, I think I actually got the pinstripes better on the new version of the figure than I did on my own version. Um, not that I'm going to swap them out or anything, but I'm really proud of the work I did on the pinstripes on this guy. Um, he just comes out, it came out that much better. Yeah, I think this will be... Uh, we'll use this because we already did a flesh wash on him. version I did. We're actually going to go back over him again um, with an even lighter color. I think he's looking pretty good, pretty happy. So it's time to focus on his gun. So I did look up the plasma pistol. Um, so this is based on a real weapon in the game. It has this sort of yellow um, part on the back.
actually pretty happy with how that came out. They're looking pretty much done. Actually, he's mine. They're looking pretty much done. These two. Yeah, that Pip Boy looks so much better now. So he's pretty much done. Happy with that. So guess what? It's time for the weapons on the Super Mutant and the Brotherhood Outcast. Let's uh, start with the Super Mutant. Start with that Super Sledge. So this is the Super Sledge on the finished figure. It's got this little yellow bit and the handle is actually yellow with some orange um, striping, which was interesting. The head is sort of a rusty metallic. I put some blood spatter on mine because I figured that was uh, a in keeping with Super Mutants. Um, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna work a little bit on weathering up some of this stuff, getting this to look a little better. I'm pretty happy with the stuff on his belt. Um, you can see I went with a lighter rope here and I went with a darker rope on this one. Um, We're going to do some touch-ups on his sort of foot wraps as well. And on the back here, um, I'm pretty happy with how he looks on the back, really. Aside from this, I want more metallic to it. Um, but like his arm guard, I do want to do a little bit of rust to it. And we'll do the um, super sledge. Let's do the super sledge first. you've watched me before, you know that yellow is the bane of my existence when it comes to painting. I find it to be the worst paint color to work with. It's so frustrating. Um, it goes on streaky. It never goes on smooth. Ever. And um, getting it to look right is just a giant pain. I'm gonna have to do some touch-ups back here um, to touch up like his belt and stuff because the yellow is, yeah. No, he did not. Um, Allie might be taking photos. I need to talk to her, but thank you. Yellow is horrible. Yellow is horrible in paint. It's horrible in nail polish. Um, there's just something about the pigments that are used to make yellow um, in a, a paintable format. Um, like a wet format. I'm really curious about um, I think uh, Stuart Semple has a like brightest yellow or something. He has every other color. I can look it up. Uh, if you've heard me talk about Stuart Semple and the art feud going on um, between Stuart Semple and Anish Kapoor I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, Sample figured out who it was who passed on his uh, pinkest pink to Anish Kapoor against, expressly against his terms of service on his website. Um, someone bought it with the intent 
of giving it to Anish Kapoor or did so and then gave it to Anish Kapoor, whether they had intended to originally or not, um, which is expressly forbidden uh, if you are buying paint from Stuart Semple. And um, he figured, he found out it's a gallery. There is a gallery that bought his paint and gave it to Anish Kapoor. So, and he posted about it publicly and was basically like, look, I know you did it. And I know that, you know, I can prove it. We've got proof. And I would like you to apologize. Because I asked you not to, and you did. And you're helping someone who's hoarding a, an artistic material and not allowing anyone else in the art world to use it. And to do that, and then, you know, to, to say to him, yeah, that's cool that you did that, and we're going to help you get a hand, your hands on the one thing that you're not allowed to use. It's a bit of a bit of a dick move. So he he posted about that. And he had a whole he had a whole letter about it, which was really cool. Um, I am firmly on Stuart Simple's side. If you hadn't figured that one out, let's see. Let's see what colors he has, because I know he has like the blackest black, which isn't Vanta black, but is like an actual paint. Um, it's Vanta Black story time again. We're not going to go through the whole thing. I'm just saying he. It, the update is he found out who did it. He found out who was uh, responsible for passing um, for passing the his paint, like his dry paint, along. The spookiest spook collection. That sounds amazing. Oh my god, it's so glittery. Um, yeah, powders. Let's see. Yeah, he does have a yellow. He's got the world's yellowest yellow. The world's pinkest pink, the world's loveliest blue, the most glitteriest, so the, the glitteriest glitter came into being um, probably partially because Stuart Semple wanted a really sparkly glitter, but also because um, Anish Kapoor had gotten his hands on the pink. After, quick version, Anish Kapoor does a lot of um, gimmicky art and corporate art sort of stuff um, and like has specifically tried to block the building of a building so that or you no know, he built a building specifically to block someone else's view like he's a, he's kind of a jerk and um, when Vanta Black was created as a like it's more as a substance to use in mechanical and scientific endeavors because it doesn't reflect any light. And that's the, the whole cool thing about it is that it's like little nanotubes. So it's applying it is tricky. Like it has a very specific way that you have to apply it that can cause things to you know come under a tremendous amount of heat in order to apply it to a surface. But the point of it was that in um, like environments where you're gonna have mirrors or lenses anywhere where you wouldn't want any reflected light to be getting into and contaminating a sample of something um, where you're collecting like light samples or you know you're you want a very specific place where light is shining a surface that absorbs all light and doesn't reflect any back would be very useful so it was originally created for scientific and endeavors and it was created by a private corporation, by a company that you know makes various material sciences stuff, and they, Anish Kapoor, bought the exclusive rights to use it as an artistic medium. They won't sell it to anyone else. He paid enough that they agreed they will not sell it to anyone else to use for art, specifically. If you want to buy it and use it for, you know, your telescope or whatever, go for it. Um, if you want to pay for it, but if you want to use it to make art tough for you, um, so he bought the rights to it. Stuart Semple was a British artist who um, was already really interested in doing super saturated color and is sort of doing the the extreme of a color, and um, he was really annoyed that an artist like Kapoor would 
exclude other members of the art world from a material and say, I'm the only one who gets to use this. Um, that's not really in the spirit of the artistic community. And um, Yeah, you make your own art. You don't want someone to plagiarize your art. Your materials, owning the rights, the exclusive rights to a material for art was not what Semple wanted. So he created a couple of paints. He put them out and said, these are the world's pinkest pink and the world's greenest green and so on. Um, and you can buy these pigments and mix them with a, a base, you know, a, a paint base. Um, and anyone is allowed to do this. You can buy them from me. Yes, you have to buy them. I'm not just giving them away because it costs money to make them. But I will sell them to you unless you are Anish Kapoor. And, or buying them on his behalf or with intent to give them to him. Or buying them with and then giving it to him. Like you, He's not allowed to use it. He's the only person who's not allowed to have it and use it. And a couple of days later, I guess, uh, Kapoor posted online a picture of himself giving the two-fingered salute, which in the UK is the equivalent of flipping the bird, um, with his fingers coated in the pinkest pink. Yeah. So, Semple then made uh, the glitteriest glitter. Uh, the world's most glitteriest glitter, which is literally shards of glass. And the joke there was, yeah, go ahead, stick your finger in that. Um, but it turns out he does have a yellowest yellow. Um, and he has tracked down who supplied Kapoor with the pink. <clears throat> so he does have a yellowest yellow, and I'm actually really curious about whether that yellow suffers from the same um, streakiness that most other yellow pigments suffer from because it's a well-known thing. I pay a lot of attention to, or I have in the past paid a lot of attention to, um, <coughs> excuse me, I've paid a lot of attention to the uh, nail polish world and much like Really, really, really curious. Much like yellow paint, yellow nail polish is known to be streaky as hell. Um, it's just one of those things. It, it just, it seems to be a constant that yellow goes on streaky. This seems, this seems pretty solid. I, there's no, I'd have to buy it and test it. It's banana scented. Um, it's an acrylic paint, made in small batches, super saturated. Non-slip, not oily surface, brush straight on, archival quality, fabrics, plays well with other acrylics. Interesting. Okay, so here's the thing. This yellow paint is legitimately a cadmium yellow, and cadmium is... You don't want to ingest it, let me put it that way. Not good for you. Um, a lot of... Yeah, I'd have to get it from the UK is the problem. So that that's what's been stopping me from buying um, any of Semple's other stuff, is that we, I would have to order it from... Maybe I don't have to order it from the UK. Let's see what the, because it's, it's, I mean, yeah. Because um, he's in the UK, he's British. No, they have a USA store. I, okay, at some point, at some point, I may need to make a purchase from Culture Hustle and get myself some of these um, some of these paints because I really do like uh, I like Stuart Semple he seems um, he seems like a cool cool dude 
and he's he's doing his level best to make good quality colors what happened to the yellow that I had? I was using a yellow. What yellow was I using? I bet it was this. Um, he's doing what he can to make these really interesting colors, these really high vibrancy colors. And he also has a couple of other ones. He has a phase and shift. And I forget which one is which. I think phase, one of them is heat sensitive and one of them is an iridescent. Uh, medium and I really do want to try the iridescent medium it looks like an oil slick because that would be so useful for doing things like beetle backs and anything that's supposed to have an armor that should be iridescent anything that's oily like when I'm doing um, like any of the fallout wasteland warfare stuff if I want to do terrain or something I might want oil slicks um, that might designate a patch that would catch fire and if you see that, then yeah, that, that's something that you could mark. Um, so that uh, iridescence would be super nice to have. Uh, and the other one is heat sensitive. It goes from a bright pink to a purple when you heat it. So it's, it's a thermal shift. Um, but I can't remember with, whether phase is the thermal and shift is the iridescent i think phase is the iridescent and shift is the the thermal um but he also has like a bright white that is um like good coverage apparently so this is a guy who cares about the artistic medium he cares about the materials he uses he cares about making them easy to use um you used to only be able to buy them powdered and you'd have to mix them into your own um either he had a paint base that was just a plain like white base that you could mix it into. Um, or you could use your own. And you can still buy the powders and mix them into various you know, bases, which is really cool because then you can mix it into your base of choice. He now also sells them pre-mixed so that you can buy liquid versions. Um, this is a guy who wants you, he wants you to have access to really good quality paint <laughs> and really bright colors. Um, and yeah, Travis, I know, does have uh, co-workers in the UK, um, but it does look like Culture Hustle does have now have like a US store, so I wouldn't have to necessarily pay for shipping from the UK. In which case, hell yeah, I'm buying this stuff. Um, Cause it's acrylic. And all the paints I use to paint figures are acrylics. As I learned when I spilled it on my pants. Um, so it would be fun to have those available, not only to like paint straight, but to mix. Uh, God, they would be fun to mix with other stuff, wouldn't they? <laughs> and he has like the blackest black and the brightest white. And it's, the blackest black is basically like short of Vanta black. This is the blackest paint. This is very like light absorbent. Um, it's the blackest paint we could make with an acrylic. And I, he got famous because of his, um, his sort of feud with Kapoor. But Simple was already working on this stuff. This was stuff that he had been working on for ages. And this gave him the traction he needed to mass produce it as opposed to do small batches. He was already making this stuff. Um, and he was already making it available to like artists in his area. This just, people, there was demand for it. Awesome, fantastic. And he always just seems so excited about showing new stuff. 
Uh, I watched his videos for Phase and Shift. He has little demo videos up on his website. And he's just so excited about it. And I think that's super cool. I love when, when someone makes something and is really excited to show it off and have other people get to experience it and see it. Um, it always makes me happy to share in someone else's delight about what they're making. This is making me want to play Fallout when I get home tonight, but I have so many other things I gotta do. So much to do. brush to slap this on all of this. This is going to end up getting covered over um, with probably a more bronzy sort of look to it. Want a little bit of brownish detail to that metallic. Yeah, the super mutant figure, I don't know. He's like, he's definitely, out of all of these figures, I think he's one of my favorite paints. Like, one of my favorite sculpts. Um, the ghoul, I think, is my next favorite. He's just fun to paint. But the super mutants just got a lot of really good, fun detail to play with. Sorry, that was like me tapping my mic with my brush. I didn't mean to do that.
He's just so much fun. He's so much fun to paint. He's so much fun to do highlighting on. I'm gonna have some pizza goldfish, cause I can. There are pizza goldfish today. I feel like the goldfish are squatter than usual. Where? I'm going to use this to do some metallic touches here and there.
Yeah, it's a foreshortened goldfish. I wonder what it says. Excuse me.
to clean up that bit back there. <coughs> so we're going to do a nice dark brown back there. Okay. I'm feeling really happy about him. Um, I'm going to put a wash on him. I want to do um, I want to do two washes on the weapon. I want to do null oil and then I'm going to be dry brushing some rust onto it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do like a dirt. I didn't do the orange. Safety orange. I'll do that in a moment. I'll do that when this dries. I'll just sort of brush it on.
So you can see the weapon here. So we're going to start um, with just a coat of silver paint. Hey, Travis, how's it going? I'm eating goldfish. I'm painting for goldfish. So as far as I'm concerned, for something like this, where I'm eventually going to need a lot of it to be this silver color, I would rather just go in and slap silver on everything. Because that's going to need to be so much of it. Hi. I'm glad you are home. And I'm glad you're here. How was the fall festival? So once I finish these, um, it's back to Wasteland Warfare. And the I'm going to finish painting the starter box set. But then it's time to assemble the figures for um, the expansions. And this is new territory for me. All of the figures that I have painted thus far in my painting time have all been pre-assembled. They're all, they've all been like from board games and stuff where you're not assembling your own figures. You're using pre-assembled figures. You're using just the figures as they came in the box. And one of the advantages to that is that you, um, you don't need to worry too much about 
gluing and it taking time. You can just open the box and play with them. Or you can be like me and paint them. But if you decide not to paint them, you don't have to worry about putting them together first. I um, mean, that's great. The downside to that is that sometimes there are places, like say, in here, that become that much harder to paint um, when they're already assembled. Whereas the Wasteland Warfare figures come without the arms on. The arms are on the sprue with it, but they aren't attached to the figure yet. And what's nice about that is you can paint it all and then attach it and then finish painting where the joint is. But you can paint in all the areas that would be covered by like someone holding a gun. You can get that chest area or the sides, um, the insides of the arms painted in high you know, quality before you go putting it together and then you can finish doing all the touch-ups. Cool. Um, bouncy castle and popcorn sound good to me. Mm, popcorn. I want kettle corn. Mm, fresh kettle corn. There was a kettle corn stand at the farmer's market in Quincy for a while. Uh, last year, that was so good. And they weren't there this year. It made me very sad. Yeah, and it wasn't cat volunteering Travis. It was cat volunteering herself. But I was going to check with Allie because Allie is here frequently. And I could leave the figures for her to take photos of. I'll see if I can touch base.
just discovered something I didn't do with my my weapon. Interesting. Okay.
Maybe I need more goldfish. Not really happy with how that came out. We're going to go back over that. I don't like how that, uh, the silver details turned out. So we're going to go back over that. Oh, they're already in round three for Pokemon? Well then. Sorry, I'm off camera. I think what I'm going to do before I do anything else on this is I'm going to put a wash on it um, because I want to make sure that I wash it down. And get in all those crevices. And we'll go back to the Super Mutant for a little bit. Um, it's not so much that I wasn't happy with having silver on the red. It was that I wasn't happy with how the how fine the detail was. Um, I wasn't as exact as I wanted to be with it. Um, and it, looking at the actual weapon, it isn't actually like full bands. It's actually... Um, like bolts. It's little bolt heads. So let's let's stick some null oil on this. We're going to end up um, brightening a lot of this back up after the fact. I'm going to be doing redoing that silver. I just wasn't happy with how that particular job was working. Um, give me a second. I'll show you how the one that I did for myself looks, and I want to do that. I want to make it look more like that. This is more what I want, where it's just like little bolts on the red. And somehow I didn't do the red band on this side. And I don't know if that was intentional at the time or, or what. Uh, it's on both sides on the, the other one, on the one that's going up for, for raffles. So. Um, so we're going to put him aside while the wash dries. But I am going to redo the silver. And the... The red is staying. It's that mahogany red. Um, that's staying as is. And it's going to be that red and silver. But um, I want them to be more 
little dots on the top of it than bands that go over it because that's how it's supposed to be. That turned out pretty well. Let's get some orange to do the orange stripe. It's my non oil. Yeah, it's not that I don't like the silver and the red together. I really do like the silver and the, the mahogany um, paint job on that. It works well with the red and black armor, the uh, power armor. And when you look up, like Fallout 4 Gatling laser, I think. It actually has little bolts on top. It should be on that side too. I wonder what made me not do it on that side. Don't know. Those yellow lines do continue forward though. That's interesting. That's a better image. I wish this was more, um, I wish this was clearer, clearer. It is real dirtied underneath though. It should be pretty gross under there. That wire on the bottom is indeed yellow. You can sort of make that out in a couple of places. But yeah, it's supposed to be little bolts on the top. And these wires are yellow, and they actually come all the way to the front. So I'll probably do that after the wash dries. Let's uh, do some more detailing on him. We're actually, we've got an orange. Um, if you look up the super sledge, It does indeed have a little stripe at the end of the handles at either end. It's orange. This looks pretty, pretty good. Looks pretty good, honestly.
Yeah, that works. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is dry brush on some dried blood and rust. Dilly bar. Probably not actual dilly bars, I assume. Sad times. Eye cream. bit of red spatter. Nice. Nice. Snacks. Snacks are good. I'm having snacks. I'm having goldfish. I'm having pizza goldfish. Just like when I was a kid, this is my grandparents. They always kept pizza goldfish. Pizza goldfish and ginger ale. That was like my sick day snack. think? What do we think about him? Yeah, not actually Dilly Bar. But hey, you know, close enough. How do we feel about him? I'm feeling like he's done. I feel like if I if I keep playing with him, he's going to end up looking real bad. I'm pretty happy. Like I feel like I could go in and 
he, that's, I mean, that's basically what happens, right? He's a super mutant, would like to think so. What do you think? He done? I think he's done. Like I said, I think if I play with him anymore, I'm going to ruin him. I'm going to end up feeling like I've messed him up. So he's going to get a final tiny bit of... Um, he's going to get a little bit of earth shade on him. Yeah, like, if I keep playing with it, it's just going to be bad. He's done. If I keep touching him, I'm going to mess him up. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I, I have to stop touching this or I'm just going to make it worse. I'm, I'm going to ruin it if I keep playing with it. On the other hand, it is time for another wash on his gun and a very careful one because I only really want to dirty up the bright yellow parts. I don't want to dirty up anything else, basically. There we go. Get his ears or his little ear hollow, as it were. We're going to do a very light wash on his shirt.
I'm actually very happy with how this guy came out on this one. his vest very carefully. And his watch chain, because you want that detail in the watch chain to really pop. She's, she's done. She's, yeah, if I touch her anymore. One more thing on her skirt, because I actually do feel like her skirt is not quite dirty enough. So it's really just a matter of finishing up uh, his gun, and then they're done and can be varnished. I'm really, really pleased with how these came out. I'm pleased with how fast they came together, all things considered, um, because I'd already done some of them. I wasn't sort of constantly going, ooh, is this really what I want to do? And um, I wasn't sort of constantly doing decision making. I knew what I wanted. Much better. Much better. That's more what I was looking for. That's what I wanted that to look like more than stripes, his little bolts. Thank you. So am I. I. I knew what I wanted. I just, I biffed it the first time. It happens. I, I tried 
to do a little too much and was like, wait a second, why am I even doing that? That's not how I wanted it in the first place. debating whether to do like more touch-ups on his armor but honestly looking at it right now I'm pretty happy with how it looks is done. So now um, we're going to touch up their bases. I told Andy I wasn't going to do any Wasteland Warfare. One problem with uh, doing those is I'm stuck with just the base game. That's okay. This guy's probably ready to varnish. Got his Pip-Boy. So let's uh, touch up his boots a tiny bit touch up his base and he'll be good to go. So who's watching? Who's still watching right now? Hi. Um, what do you got planned for the rest of the day? Anything interesting? Or hanging out? Nice. That's right. You had mentioned that. You were going to stream some more. I may well tune in. Watching you stream was, it was a very nice way um, to spend my dinner break the other day. I was so sick. I had, my head cold was really, really bad. And because of what my day looked like and what my week looked like, there was just 100% no way I was going to be able to stay home at all. Um, I even went so far on Thursday to call my boss in the morning before my preschool class kids showed up and ask her, like, how annoyed would you be if I didn't come to the department meeting and just went home? And we did go through the agenda and, like, she got all my thoughts on everything, which was the point. Um, but then the preschool class came and I was like, you know what? If they wipe me out, I'm going home. If they don't, um, I'm just going to stick it out. And they left, and I was feeling okay. But that was Thursday. Wednesday was like a nightmare. I knew there was no way they could get me coverage um, at my branch for the evening. I just I knew there was no way that was happening. Um, so it was like I'm going to get through my story time at 3. At four, I'm gonna eat, and then from five to nine, I'm just gonna soldier through it. Um, so I was feeling super wiped by the time I hit my dinner break on Wednesday. Um, I just sort of sat down and didn't move for an hour at the back counter at my my branch. My branch is very very tiny. It doesn't have a a staff room or anything it has a counter that is in the alcove directly behind the desk it just sort of goes um circ desk 
our seats at the circ desk and then there's sort of an entry so we can get out from behind the desk and then behind it there's an alcove that goes back about um, maybe eight nine feet uh, maybe ten feet um, that has a counter along one side of it and a shelf or several shelves above that counter under the counter is where we put the bins of stuff that are going out of town like things that are returned from other towns in our network that are going to other towns the things that are going up to the big library and any donations people drop with us. The shelves have office supplies and holds, things people have requested from other libraries. Um, the Lost and Found is up there. Um, on the counter is like my inbox, like things for me to deal with that people can leave for me if I'm not there. Or, um, and then like the stuff that we need to handle all a regular amount of time, but not every single day. That's all on those shelves. And on the opposite side of that, so that's one wall here, opposite that is a bookcase that has like the problem shelves, things that are missing parts that need to be mended. Um, extra flyers for like when we have voting um, information, we have voting information pamphlets right now. The extras, the spares that don't fit out on the floor, those are all sitting there. We have flyers about the city, those all all the spares of that all sit back there. Um, and the bins for things going to the other two branches yeah. live there. And that's it. That's the whole space to the back of my, behind the desk at my library. The bathroom's back there. So it's the door to the bathroom is next to that bookcase. That's it. That's the whole behind the desk space. There is no staff room. There is no kitchen. There is no other space. That is it. That's it. Um, so when I take my break and eat my lunch, I am sitting at that counter, which means I am 100% visible to everyone who walks up to that desk. And so all I can really do to make it clear that I am not currently working is put on bright blue headphones and put out my lunch in front of me and put, have my phone and a book out and make it very obvious that I am not currently available. I take off my, my staff badge and I sit at the back counter with my food and my book, and my phone, and my headphones. And there are still people, I've had people come behind the desk to tap me on the shoulder to ask if I can come up and help them because my coworker is like busy with someone at the copier or something. So yeah, it's a little tricky. So on Wednesday it was like, I'm going to sit down I'm not going to move again until my break is over. And that's what I did. It was really nice. Um, we don't really have a wish list. Donations, um, we're more talking about books people drop with us. And our book budget, we actually, uh, our book budget is pretty good. Um, we don't really have a, a wish list for books. When it comes to craft supplies and the like, um, we're also pretty good. Usually um, we get like used markers and stuff from some of the schools nearby and I'll get those, um, but we're pretty good. Um, we don't have like an active wish list. We're very lucky in that we don't need one. Um, if I absolutely had to, like if someone was like, pick something now, um, it would be markers at this moment in time, because goodness knows, uh, kids are not great at snapping the caps back on like Crayola markers. So they tend to dry out faster than one would hope. Um, and that's a common problem with markers and kids. I, I know I'm not unique in that being an issue. Um, so we don't get them as donations as frequently as we get, say, crayons um, or colored pencils. We have a lot of colored pencils. It's really weird. I don't know if it's like a teacher thinking, colored pencils are great. I'll get colored pencils. And then realize that like they have a classroom of five-year-olds who want to use crayons and markers and are not like really into the fine work that colored pencils allow for. That's not really what they're aiming for. They want coverage. They want fast coverage of whatever they're coloring. They don't want to have to use a pencil for that. Um, so we, we do get a fair amount of colored pencils as donations, but markers dry out. Markers have very short lives. And uh, recently, I only put the color, the markers out for the younger kids, or for the older kids. I don't, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, how to close markers. Um, how to close markers. Something kids need to be told. And I, I do try to you know show them, but because I can't watch every kid, because I sometimes have younger siblings who have not learned that lesson, and because sometimes uh, a kid just doesn't realize they didn't close it all the way, eventually, the, and also because I'm getting them used usually, I get a lot of like markers from classrooms, and I can't vouch for the students in those classrooms having closed them properly. So I go through them at the beginning of every school year, but uh, we discovered recently that, and I say we, by we I mean my story time kids and I discovered recently that almost every orange marker in my marker tubs is like useless. So I had to ditch like 10 orange markers on Wednesday. Just a slaughter of orange. Um, and for whatever reason, red doesn't last very long, which is annoying. The red ones seem to, I have fewer of them. Like I just don't get as many donated, so I can only imagine that they, they got used up prior to when a teacher went through their stuff and went, I should donate these to the library. So I gotta ask my boss for a class pack of markers. Um, though I will say, hi, um, if you are looking for like a cool art supply to get, um, and this is something that I found very few people were aware existed, and I'm not even sure how easy they are to get anymore, but they may be worth looking into. Crayola, made for a while and may still make, I hope they do because I need replacements for the stuff that I have, um, construction paper crayons. I don't know if you've seen these, but they're amazing. Uh, they come in a limited array of colors. It's like a real bold purple and a cyan blue and a magenta pink, but not a red. It's like a real hot pink. Um, bright orange, yellow, white, a green that's almost a teal. It's like a, a bluish green. It's not like a spring green. Um, and brown. No black because it's construction paper crayons. The point of these are that they work well on dark colored construction paper in a way that most crayons will not. You know when you like color with most crayons on like black construction paper and you just get sort of vague color over black? It's basically like, oh yeah, I can tell there's blue if I hit it with the right light. Um, these are made to be, they're made with a different wax formula and they're made to be opaque or at least mostly opaque on dark colored paper. And I love them. Um, at one point, some teacher had donated just this massive bin of crayons to us. Just like this huge box of crayons. Let me check that link. Um, just this huge box of crayons. They had donated this huge thing. And, um, yep, that's them. That is definitely them. It looks like they've added a couple of colors, which is really awesome. Um, it looks like they've got a, a light pink in there. It's 16 of them, and it looks like there's a spring green in there. That's cool. Um, I wonder what colors they're making them in now. I have a class pack of them. Um, doesn't really say what colors they have. Let's see, there is not a further description. That's fine. Um, I have... Let me put this in the, in the chat. I have that um, at work. It's a class pack. And it's fantastic. It's, um, there's like 160, so you've got like a lot of each color. But I'm, I've had them for maybe 12 years. I've been using the same class pack of them. 
They've lasted because they're sturdy. They're thick crayons, and I only bring them out when I need them. If I'm doing um, like an outer space story time, and I want them to be able to draw on black paper, I'll bring out the construction paper crayons. If we're doing vehicles and I'm giving them black paper for roads, I want them to be able to draw on black paper. So yeah, I'll give them that. Um, but if I'm just having them like color, then no, I'm not gonna give them the construction paper crayons for that. That's, I don't wanna waste them when they aren't necessary. So that's probably why they've lasted me as long as they have. But they're really good. They're totally worth looking into because kids know. Kids know that when they use crayons, if they're drawing on dark paper, they know that like their results are gonna be iffy. Um, because they draw with crayons. Kids draw with crayons. It's early literacy skill. It's good, good times. Uh, manual dexterity, wonderful. Learning that you how to use writing implements, fantastic. Um, because it's a common thing for kids to be doing, they do know that crayons don't work great on um, dark paper. They've learned that lesson. So bringing these out, it's like magic. And the colors are so bright. They're so bright. Like, it's hard to, to impress upon you just how vivid these colors are from that picture. They are vivid. But you can see what I mean about the, um, the red isn't really like red, red. It's more of a pink. The green isn't like a spring green. It's a, it's a tealy sort of green. The, the blue is very much a cyan. But yeah, I'm gonna have to ask my boss to get me another class pack of these. It's pretty affordable, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to ask my boss for another class pack of these at some point because they're breaking and there are fewer um, yellows than there are any other color. And yeah. All right, those bases are done, which means these guys are really close to being ready to varnish. Basically, I just want to leave them, let them sit for a little while. I'll probably varnish them later this afternoon before I leave. I've got like two more hours before I leave. Don't ask the boss just yet. Hi. You don't have to. Um, but yeah. I'm... I'm really happy with how these guys all turned out. I'm really pleased. So let's look at them. Let's look at them against the ones that I did for myself. The Craft Fairy. Hi. Thank you. Um, this is mine. This is the one I, I have at home. This is the one I've made for myself. It's done. It's varnished. I've played a game with him. I'm really happy with how this guy came out. And next to him is the one I did for uh, should probably do something with that. Let's we'll touch that up. I'll, I'll play with that a little bit. Um, get that looking a little better. I did slightly different uh, paint work on there. I left a lot of rust residue. They're so beefy. Um, I left a lot of rust residue on his rags here because I figure if you're wearing, if you're using rusting wire to hold your rags over your shoulders, that rust is gonna get off, like get like all over your shirt. It, rust doesn't stay on metal. It goes everywhere. So um, I also put more blood spatter onto his hammer. He's got more sort of spattery stuff going on there. And I'm pretty pleased with how that came out. Do keep in mind, this guy is varnished, so he is a slightly shinier. I'm really happy with how he came out, with how the new one came out. So we're gonna touch up his uh, little arm guard here. Let's. Let's see, what do I want to do with this?
all my silvers have dried. Well, that's okay. I do want to use shadowed steel for this because I, I want it to be a darker metallic. Super mutants are not known for being like super into sitting around and polishing their armor. So you're going to stream this evening, Pi? I will probably tune in um, until Loading Ready Live hits. I think that's tonight. Is, it, is live tonight? Yeah, it is tonight. But not until 9 Eastern, so I'll probably... Uh, hang out in your chat for a while and just chill. So I was watching Kate the other day. Um, I don't know, do you, do you watch Kate's streams? I was watching Kate the other day. I do really like her community, so I hang out in her, her stream a lot. Um, and she was talking about how someone had, I guess, commented to her that they don't want to like hang out in her stream anymore because she's too popular. And um, I felt really bad for her that someone had said that because I, I understand the sentiment of being like, I cope better in a chat where I know I'm heard, like where I know if I say something, it's going to be seen. I get that. I totally get that. I do. Um, but you should be happy that the streamer that you're following is successful enough that they have a big chat now. You know. I also, you know, I'd rather participate in a chat actively if I know I'm going to get seen just because otherwise it's like screaming into the void and I'm like, mm, do I really want to do that? Um, that being said, I just, I, I, I don't know. I did, I did think it was kind of a bummer that someone put that sort of on her, that it's her problem that they prefer to be in a chat that, um, that is smaller. It's not her fault. That is not her fault. I mean, it kind of is, but it's not her problem. No, it's not. Like, I, it, I get the sentiment. It was like, if you want to say it, say something more along the lines of, I'm sorry, I'm not super active in your chat. I feel more confident. You know, I feel more comfortable speaking up in a chat or hanging out in a chat that's not as active. But hey, it's awesome for you that you have this awesome, huge chat because you've been become popular. Yeah, sort of putting it on the streamer as how dare you get big enough that I'm not hanging out as, anymore or your, you know, your chat's too fast. You should become less popular, play unpopular games. I don't know. It just seemed that she was, she was obviously very bummed about someone saying this to her and it was a bummer to hear. Um, not in a how dare she share it way, but in a you know, she's worked really hard. She was, she's worked so, 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 so hard to get to where she is and to be at the place where this is her, you know, her livelihood. This is how she makes a living. Wouldn't you want her to be doing really well? Wouldn't you be happy? I don't know. I, I feel like there's a commodification of streamers' lives that I'm not... Kate was talking about it the other night. Um, that, like, she feels bad when she's taking a day off. That, like, she's taking this vacation to um, Disneyland. And while she takes that vacation, she's going to be vlogging. And she's going to be... Um, she has things that are getting posted while she's on vacation. 
And she like joked, she was like, because I don't know the meaning of the word vacation. And I think that's probably true for a lot of self-employed people is that like, even when you're vacationing, vacationing you certainly ha you have to hustle. Um, but I felt bad. I felt bad that she was like, my self-worth is tied to like how successful I am at my job. And because I'm, so, because she's self-employed that, that means that, you know, she's sort of always, she doesn't have someone else setting hours where she can say, okay, it's time for me to go and I'm not working right now because it's not my hours to work. When you're self-employed, it's sort of like all the hours are my hours to work. I'm not touching him. He looks awesome the way he is. Yeah. I think they're done. Washes are done. Um, that gun came out 100% the way I wanted it to. The sort of silver highlighting on, on him came out really well, I think. Yeah, I am really, really, really happy with how these guys came out. I'm going to let them sit for an hour or so um, and dry so that I can varnish them. I want to varnish them today so that they're done done as of next week because we only have two weeks before Extra Life. Are you going to be able to physically be here for Extra Life at all, Pi? Thank you very much. Because um, if you are able to be here during Extra Life, that would be super cool. But if you aren't, I totally understand. I mean, we're not as close. Like, we're, we're a little bit of a distance from you. Sorry, we will not see you, but um, hopefully I'll see you when I next stream. And like I said, I'll I'll pop in to your stream when you start streaming. Um, it's about three thirty now. I'm gonna probably close up the stream now. Could probably work on some super mutants from Wasteland Warfare, um, but that requires getting Andy up here. And I'm not sure if he's too busy because he was doing bookie, bookman's stuff um, downstairs. I don't know. Um, that would be awesome. Um, so let's uh, let's chat about that at some point. Um, Like DM me on Twitter or something, um, and we'll we'll like. Do you have any like photos of cupcakes you've made in the past that we could like stick on a a sheet and put it up? Because that would be super cool. Um, but yeah, DM me on Twitter and we'll figure it out. Because that would be super cool to have a a cupcake voucher uh, up for raffle um, for extra life. I think that would be a really awesome idea, um, and then we can put you in contact with whoever wins it so awesome so yeah we'll we'll make up like a, a nice poster for it and make it look pretty nice yeah definitely dm me on twitter and we'll we'll put it together cool thank you for joining me and watching and i will see you in your chat um when you get started i'll be on so and then i'll see you during live later <laughs> bye